Good luck. Cheat, cheat, cheat.
Aloha guys, Andy is demonstrating why we do not want to splash and swim away from sharks. Splashing and swimming away imitates what prey does. When we're dealing with top predators like sharks, we want to also act like a predator. So what you'd actually want to do is not splash, turn around, face the animal, and maintain eye contact. With tiger sharks, you can place your hand on the top of their head, push down gently, and that will redirect them away from you. Things I haven't seen for seven months while spending the winter here at the South Pole. Number one, bugs. I've mentioned before that there's no wildlife outside because it's too cold, but that also means that no insects have been able to survive either inside or outside the station. Number two, apples. We ran out of fresh fruits in late April. Number three, coins. While there are coins at the store, pretty much all the prices are rounded to the nearest dollar, so I haven't really seen or used any. Number four, grass. This one may seem obvious, but I haven't seen a lawn or grass of any kind. But at least we have some plants in the greenhouse. Number five, dirt. Because we're built on 9,000 feet of ice, there's no dirt anywhere. This also keeps things really clean. Number six, children. The youngest person on station is 25 years old. And finally, number seven, cough and colds. Because we had such a strict quarantine process to make sure COVID didn't arrive here, we also eliminated many other illnesses like the common cold and influenza. As part of the medical support staff, this has made my job way easier. Hi guys, a couple of people have been asking what it's like to actually live at the South Pole, so I will be showing you my dorm room. Um, this is a empty dorm. Um, this is kind of what we are given, just small mattress, pillows. Um, it does come with a great view. The sun has set, so it looks like this all the time now. Um, in about a week, it'll go pitch black. This is my room, what I've done with it. Hi, that's me. Um, I really enjoy it. You can get um, tapestries kind of hidden around the base. I mean, this base has been around for a while, which is pretty nice. Then if you go down the hallway, we have another window. Unfortunately, when the sun goes down, we have to block out all the windows because of the science that goes on. We don't want to interfere. So then if you go outside, oh, it is so cold. It's negative 70 today with a 110 degree wind chill. Antarctica is the land of the fantastic. Here at the South Pole, we get more than our share of amazing phenomena, but now that the sun is finally coming up, there's one more I want to share with you. As you know, the air here is generally super cold. When the sun comes up, it starts warming some of that air and creating a disturbance in the way that light is transmitted through it. This creates some of the most mind-bending mirages. One type of mirage that you're probably familiar with is the heat shimmer. This is the effect you get when you look down a long, hot road in the summer. Here, it appears on the horizon near the sun, and it's so intense that it often looks like the horizon is on fire. It's a funny thing, leaving a place you haven't left in nine months, where you've only ever seen the same 38 faces day after day. It is such a bittersweet moment. I had an amazing time here at the South Pole, rubbing shoulders with the most brilliant scientists and getting to know some of the most good-hearted people. Part of me wants to stay forever at this little outpost at the end of the world, but the other part of me knows that the station I knew over the winter is disappearing. Even over the few days from station open to me leaving, I already felt the change, and with it, the feeling that the night shift is over, 
and it's no longer my place to be here anymore. My job is done now, and it's mission accomplished. Watching the station fade into the distance as we climbed into the sky, it became so clear to me, all over again, just how remote I was at the South Pole Station. A speck of nothing at the end of nowhere. A place where time barely makes sense, where the day lasts a whole year, and the memories last a lifetime. After living in the South Pole for 10 months, I have left. Um, it was sad to leave somewhere. I, I loved it there.